my private law practice for three years now. And about a year ago, I realized that a lot of the legal questions that were coming up for my clients, like my clients are just the coolest people. They're creating community supported restaurants or they're doing urban agriculture, they're creating housing co-ops, you know, they're creating the world that I want to live in, but they're doing it in ways that are so cutting edge. It's like, it's like the legal problems that I have to stay up at night thinking about are just kind of overwhelming. And I feel like the research, you know, for one client, the research could just take me months. You know, someone forming a local currency or, you know, doing something that's so kind of out there that, um, you know, I alone, just as a solo attorney, I don't feel like I could, I don't have the resources to do it. So another attorney named Jenny Casson, who, um, who works a lot with social enterprises and nonprofit, for-profit hybrids, was also feeling the same way that her clients were doing a lot of cutting edge things. And, and there's just a research that needs to be done, educational materials that need to be developed. So we formed a nonprofit a year ago called the Sustainable Economies Law Center. And we have uh, five program areas. The overall mission is to create more localized economies, more sustainable economies, just economies. And um, to do that by supporting things like cooperatives, you know, worker-owned cooperative businesses, local investing, community supported businesses where the community members come together and maybe purchase things in advance from a business in order to share the risk. Um, things like barter and local currencies, you know, ways that people can transact with each other without using money, which, you know, our, our, federal, our federal currency is so scarce. Um, but the, the resources people have and the skills they have and the things they have to offer are infinite. It's just a matter of finding ways to transact them. So that's a high priority for us. Uh, urban agriculture and the legal issues that come up with that. And, um, and then housing. So thinking about shared housing, uh, just sort of innovative housing solutions that are more, sustainably, more sustainable economically. Uh, so those are all the different areas that we focus on. And the main way that we do our work is by doing research and creating like FAQs and legal guides and putting them out there for, the, for communities. But along the way, we've just run up against so many legal and policy issues where we feel like that law really needs to change. It's not enough for us to tell people, here are all the barriers you need to overcome. Like, we need to actually break down some of those barriers. And so we've done some work so far. Uh, we've petitioned the Securities and Exchange Commission to change uh, the securities laws and give an exemption to people who are... Uh, who have created a business and want to get investments of $100 or less. So let's say that you want to start um, a bakery in your local community and you just put the word out to the whole community, hey, I'm starting this bakery, do you want to invest in my bakery, $100 or less? So everybody gets a small share of the bakery and in that way the, the bakery owner can raise the capital they need to launch and, uh, and the community owners can share in the, the wealth that's created. But right now to do that is so complicated because securities laws make you go through all of these hurdles, do all these disclosures, get permits in order to issue securities. And the average person, the average small business just can't afford to do that. So we've asked the Securities and Exchange Commission to, to make an exception for $100 or less. We feel like that's just, there's, it's just such a small risk for someone to take. You know, maybe they'll lose all their money, but I think that the value to society is going to be so great that it's worth it. So that's one area of advocacy that we worked on, and then we've also, uh, we're working on uh, adding a new statute to California that's specific to worker cooperatives, because right now our, our cooperative corporation statute makes it really difficult for people to form worker co-ops. Like the average person can't figure out what the statute's trying to tell them. And, and so uh, we're right now trying to learn about the legislative process and talk to one of our representatives about getting that through. Uh, and then there's just a handful of other issues that uh, keep coming up as barriers. So we're going to be taking on other policy issues as we go. And then we do some direct um, representation of clients through the Sustainable Economies Law Center. Um, including a local currency project in Davis, California, and then we've done clinics where, like a day-long clinic where urban farmers came in all day and for an hour each we were able to just sort of deal out advice on whatever project they're working on. So.
And there's just a huge need for answers to these kinds of questions. And uh, so yeah, we, we sort of feel like we're, we're helping to grease the wheels of all of the creative things happening in the communities.